my talk is titled Never Hide. I'd like to begin and apologize for any awkward postures I may make because I'm actually recovering from a breast surgery I did only three days ago. Okay, wait, if you didn't listen to my intro, it is not what you think. I did not get a boob job for my first TED talk, okay? <laughs> I am a breast cancer survivor, diagnosed only two years ago at 24 years old. So I've been through 16 rounds of chemotherapy, 29 rounds of radiation, and in between all that, I did a full mastectomy. So they removed my entire left breast, hence my second phase of reconstruction done just a couple of days ago. Now I'm able to stand here and say this loud and proud because it's something that I've been doing from the day that I found out I had cancer. You see, I am also a blogger and I made the bold decision to publicly share my entire breast cancer experience online for you all to read, watch, share with absolutely nothing to hide. If you go on to my blog, nally.ca, you can follow me from my very first appointment all the way up into my very last treatment, which was in July, where after one crazy year later, I was finally able to say that I am now cancer-free. Thank you. So yes. Treatments were dreadfully effective, and I'm able to say that I beat cancer. But what I mean by that goes far beyond me standing here alive and well speaking to you all today. To me, to beat cancer, it means to not let it take away an inch of who you are, not your personality, your beliefs, your soul, whatever it is that makes you, you. Trust me, it's harder than you think. And that's why I like to think that we all have cancer. And I'm not talking about Dr. Oz's scientific theory that we all have cancer cells inside us until we provoke them. I'm talking about whatever it is that you're going through that makes you unhappy, sad, angry, and is insidiously killing you inside. That's your cancer. Now, after everything that I've been through, people tend to ask me, Nally, how did you do it? What's your best life advice? And although I do have many now, my main response always comes down to this. Never hide. It's what I believe allowed me to beat cancer, but also be the person that I've always dreamed to be. But wait, what do I mean by hiding? Well, hands up here, who's ever played hide and seek? You never played hide and seek before? Really? Hide. <laughs> well, me and my brothers, we used to play all the time. As you can see, we did everything together. Now, do you remember that feeling you get when you're hiding and you're really nervous and you're shaking and your palms are sweaty, your heart is beating and your stomach starts to hurt as the person gets closer and closer and nearly gives you a heart attack. I hated that feeling. Now I want you to think of anything in your life that's ever made you feel that way, that gave you that same type of physical stress. I remember when I got my biopsy to find out if the lumps that I found in my left breast were actually tumors, I had to wait for the pathology report. Longest five days of my entire life. And it just so happened that the weekend in between that, I was hosting my annual pool party. And as you all know, Montreal summers are really short. So of course, all my friends showed up. And there I was with a huge bruise on my breast as a bandage, and I wasn't allowed to swim in case of infection. So of course, all my friends kept asking me, what's wrong? Why aren't you swimming? Bombarding me with all these questions because I wasn't the typical life of the party. 
but I didn't want to tell them. For one, I wasn't even sure if it was cancer yet, so why worry them for nothing? But to be honest, I was scared. I didn't want my friends to look at me any differently. I didn't want them to pity me. So I hid, and I lied, and I pretended everything was okay and put on this really fake square smile the entire night. And you know that same feeling you get when you're hiding, when playing hide and seek? I had it the entire party. It made me feel sick. That's probably the one and only time I hid anything about my cancer. Because shortly after that, it was official, and I was immediately thrown into these intense treatments that destroy your entire immune system. So I lost my hair, my eyelashes, my eyebrows, my nails blackened, and I could easily get sick. So yes, it does kill the cancer cells, but it kills every good cell in your body too. I didn't have control over that. But what I did have control over was any added stress to my body, any negative energy. And that feeling that I had at my pool party, worrying about what other people may think of me, I promised myself I would no longer bear. There is something so liberating about not having to hide which is why, when I lost my long black hair, hardest part, by the way, I decided not to wear a wig. I don't know, wearing one made me feel really fake. And I could just imagine what it would be like to walk downtown and then bump into someone I know and that person being like, hey, Natalie, uh, you look different. You change your hair? And then I'd have to be like, uh, yeah, sort of not really, and have those really awkward moments that everybody hates. I didn't want that. I didn't want the fear of stepping out of my house and wondering if anyone notices that I have cancer. So instead of hiding, I accepted it, and I revealed it. How? By continuing to post selfies of my everyday life on Instagram, as you all normally do, don't lie. So whenever I did go downtown, I bumped into people who recognized me. Many that I knew, but a lot that I didn't. And they'd all come up to me and give me a huge hug and thank me for giving them hope. Now that feeling is good for the soul. With all that energy that I saved from not stressing about wigs, hiding, lying, or those really awkward moments. I used it to heal. And better yet, it gave me the strength to help others heal too. And that's when I realized, when you hide aspects of who you are because you are scared or you're ashamed of your illness, disability, sexuality, body or so-called imperfections, it doesn't just affect you negatively. It affects everyone around you. Because when you hide, you are inhibiting yourself from living your purpose and making a huge impact in this world. But if you allow yourself to be seen, to be heard, to be vulnerable, to be you, you will achieve the three most fulfilling things in life that we all naturally seek. Ready? One, you will inspire. When I started my blog, it was my therapy, it was my release. Never did I expect to build such a huge community of empowered young women who, thanks to my misfortune, have found the inner strength to never give up on themselves. Women who write to me from all around the world to tell me that by simply seeing me live so happily and positively with cancer, it gave them the permission to do the same. And then they'd send me these selfies of them rocking the bald head too, all proud. And that makes everything I've ever been through worth it. 
Many of them also chose to come out and share their story too, creating a movement, a virtuous circle that continuously helps others. So don't you dare be ashamed of your story because you have no idea who it can inspire. Number two, you will aspire, but aspire to be someone that you are destined to be. This is my friend Jonathan. We went to primary school together, and I remember growing up, he was always the athletic type. So he, had, he was a hockey player, and he had big dreams of someday being remembered like a champion, like Maurice Richard. Never did we think that in our mid-20s, we'd bump into each other during radiation. Jonathan is currently fighting his eighth cancer. And at the end of March, the doctors told him he only has six months left to live. But he is not giving up. And by that, I mean he is actively sharing his story with the hopes to inspire others in his shoes for the many years to come. Recently, when I went to go visit him, he said something that really resonated with me. He said, if Mandela was meant to spend 20-something years in prison so that he can change the world, then I was meant to have cancer for 20-something years so that I can do the same. Let me tell you, life will throw you challenges that can change what you can and cannot do at a snap of a finger. So what's important is to ask yourself, who do you want to be? Who do you want to be no matter what you do or no matter what happens to you? Because like Jonathan, no matter how much time he has left in this world, he will always be a champion. And lastly, the third most beautiful thing in life that will happen, you will connect. You will connect with people that you are meant to meet. Open yourself up to the universe and you will become a magnet to not just attracting the right people, but the right opportunities, such as me being here today giving you this TED talk because I swear to God it was actually part of my bucket list this year. <laughs> Thank you. But you will also attract the right relationships with people who love you for who you are, even when you go bald or you lose a breast and you got nothing but this huge scar, no nipple, or you barely even look like the person that they first met. Stay true to yourself, know your worth, and you will find someone who will look at you like nothing's ever changed. Inspire, aspire, connect. Now I know all this is so easily said than done. Why? Because the world we live in makes it really easy to hide. But what we don't know is that the small decisions that we make to hide don't just affect us and everyone around us, it affects the entire world. For example, when we choose to desperately wear wigs, weaves, or hair extensions to hide our bald, short, or nappy hair, thousands of women in India are forced to shave their heads for little or no compensation, benefiting this multi-million dollar market. When you use whitening creams, as they excessively do in my parents' home country, the Philippines, to hide your dark, natural, beautiful skin, not only are you putting yourself at risk of lethal health conditions, but you are teaching your children that the color of their skin defines them. When you wear a mask every day to hide your sexuality, you are preventing yourself from finding someone that you love and who will love you right back. I'm talking about real love and happiness that you can give back to this world. People hide their talents and ideas because they are scared of being rejected, but what if you are great? People hide their age and body and imperfections with all the makeup and cosmetic surgery in the world, but what if you are unique? 
People hide their feelings and emotions by numbing it with all the drugs and alcohol that they can buy, but really, how long does that last? Earlier, when I said that never hiding allowed me to beat cancer, but also be that person that I always dreamed to be, well, that person is simply the strong girl my parents raised who taught me that I can make a difference in this world by simply being myself. Truth is, we all have that power. And that makes it our purpose. So please, listen to this. Never hide your imperfections because that's what makes you beautiful. Never hide your weaknesses because that's what makes you strong. Never hide who you are because there is no one in the world like you. And someone out there needs you, the real you. Thank you. Merci, Nadie.